Hey everybody, Stephen Rosell here, Senior Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and this is part five of a multi-part Maya Arnold demo series where I'm covering just a range of topics. We started out with some lighting basics, some shader basics, and then we did a couple of demos around uh, some of the cool stuff you can do in the render view. And this particular demo is around the render setup system, uh, the one that was introduced a couple of releases ago, and more recently has had Arnold kind of tied into it. So first things first, I'm going to bring up my render layers from my status bar up here. It opens up a separate window. You can also access it from the rendering editors. There's a render setup uh, option right here. Uh, typically, I like to dock this, and I oftentimes just put it right here between the outliner uh, and my render view slash viewport. Now it comes with a property editor, which we'll get to in uh, whoops, which we'll get to in a minute. This has to do with the properties uh, of the layers uh, that you're creating. One thing to point out is that the legacy render layer system is still accessible, although it is disabled because they are not compatible. So if you go under the rendering options and the preferences, you can switch to the legacy render layer. So if you have old files that are using that legacy system, you can still get to it. The new render set, setup system is the modern, more flexible, forgiving system uh, that you'll be using going forward. So for starters, we have to, to create some render uh, layers to work with. So I'm going to create a render layer, and we will call this our car layer. Now, this is the highest level of the layer system, but we have to create something called collections for the layers because the layer itself right now is empty. You can see when I enable that layer, my viewport is cleared filtered and then my render view is empty black basically so what i need to do is fill this or populate this via collections now collections are basically groups of objects in your scene so we'll call this my car col collection and you can do this one of two ways you can either explicitly add objects to your collections so for instance i can grab the body of the car here and let me give myself a little more Space. There we go. And I can say add that to the layer. And now when I filter that layer, when I enable that layer, you can see now it will filter the viewport, kind of isolate select, and then it will only render out what is contained within that layer. So that one specific node will be rendered. Now we'll point out that by default now layers uh, or rather collections will also include the lights. That's an option. You can turn that off if you choose to. Uh, but right now it is including the lights. So let's actually remove the explicit node, and instead let's use a, an expression to target those. If I hover over the include section of the property editor, I'll get a list of examples that show me how to use expressions. So things like adding and selecting objects, but things like using wildcards as well. Simplest example being something like for the car. Uh, instead of putting all of the individual objects in the car, I want to put anything that has the, the word car as a prefix into this layer. So I'll do car underscore star, and then I'll refresh that layer, and now you'll see that every part of the car that is within that car hierarchy or any node that happens to be named car gets included as part of that render layer. You'll notice the background is now called out. The background is filtered out. If I disable the layer, I see the background again. If I enable the layer, the background disappears because it's not part of the layer. Now, if I were to go in and add new objects to my scene, let's actually disable this layer. And I'll just come in here and I'll just create a simple object. Let's just create a sphere. And then we'll scale that sphere up nice and big. And we'll just put this right in front of my car so it's about to collide with it. And what you'll see is uh, when I turn on my layer, that disappears because it's not part of my layer. Let me just maximize my space here. However, if I were to take this sphere, and simply give it a prefix with the word car underscore, and I hit enter. Now, the next time I update that layer, you'll notice that that now gets included as part of the layer. The cool thing is anything that I add to my scene, whether it be through importing or referencing or creating new nodes, will automatically get added based on that naming convention. So if I were to go in and grab this sphere and let's say, for instance, duplicate it around a few times. So I'll basically do something like this, put one in front, one to the back, one to the side, and so on. Now you'll notice that all those are rendered. And as soon as I trigger that render layer, those will now get included as part of that render layer because they're using the appropriate prefix. So this allows you to build your scenes in a way that will automatically be conducive to any render layer setup you have. So as long as you use naming that is consistent between your scenes or between your teams, 
you can basically import a, a complex setup for re render layers and have it automatically populate with the objects in your scene.